Hello. Hello. And welcome to another bonus episode of the Dungeon Bros Podcast. I'm Connor. And I'm Sam. We are not brothers. Nor are we in a dungeon. But today, we are with our good friend Jason of Found Familiar Dice. Hello. How's it going? Oh, it is It is going lovely. We've had a lovely little chat prior to the start of this recording, um, pressuring him to do stuff for us. Yes. It's, it's a wonderful time. We're only adding to that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, of course, of course. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Found Familiar Dice, uh, we we met him on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Also has an Instagram page, Found Familiar Dice, and mm-hmm. a website where he sells beautifully handcrafted resin dice, uh, as well as dice. Uh, you have a dice tray, I saw, and like some I, yep. little figures. Yeah. So I um. So we've. Yeah. So first of all, the the, the figures are different sticker designs um, that uh, my wife came up with. Um, mm-hmm. And then, yeah, so the dice trays um, are <clears throat> not really no, relatively new at this point, but um, they're a lot of fun to do because I, I like to make them with both wood and resin, um, particularly the bottom being made of resin. And so I get to do really fun, large surface area pours that you can't do in a little die. Um, so, yeah, they, and they're a lot of fun to make. I don't I've... Have you ever rolled on like a resin surface before? No, mostly I roll on uh, felt on wood. The felt felt is the felt is nice, but like there's like that special clack, like clickety clack that you get from it's resin so trays. It's, it's I mean, really I love it. It is so much louder, but the the oh, yeah. dice will bounce a little more through the tray. Yeah, which is an interesting unintended side effect. Um, so it it makes your dice roll better. <laughs> yeah. Yep, it's more fair. Yeah, more fair. Increases the chaos and randomness in the world, which we are all about. Always. <laughs> Always. So we wanted to bring Jason on to talk about dice making, uh, specifically your journey through dice making, and like help anyone that's listening figure out how and why um, you know, a really, really nice set of polyhedral dice that you find from like an artisan crafter such as yourself costing like $50, <laughs> which I always feel like I see the memes online of like, why is this so expensive? You could just go to Amazon and get like six sets of dice for 12 bucks. And it's like, you clearly have not had very, very nice, nice dice. <laughs> very nice dice. So what, what got you started into making dice? Yeah, well, um, journey is a great word because even getting to that point is, a little bit of a journey, but, um, so I, I like to go back to, um, saying that I, first of all, I got into, uh, tabletop gaming, um, which is what ultimately tailed into making dice because, you know, as you guys know, um, you, when you have one set of dice and you keep playing one set's not enough, you're going to cover it enough. enough more. It's an addiction. Um, and I figured, <laughs> you know, why, <clears throat> why just keep buying lots of dice when I can maybe learn how to make my own? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, I got I got into Dungeons and Dragons specifically back in college, um, and when we moved down to Grand Rapids, Michigan, I managed to develop a a, a group of guys that I've been able to play consistently with uh, for several years now. Um, and back in two thousand nineteen. I started binging like dice making tutorials on YouTube, uh, particularly Ribonator. Mm-hmm. Um, and the same year, uh, my wife surprised me with uh, just like a little D20 single sprue mold off of Etsy and some resin. And I got one good D20 out of that. Which was uh, the first four, and after was that, it just your first yeah. attempt that got you that good one, or did it take you a couple? Because I've okay. I've made my own molds and tried yeah. it, and I have not had any success with it yet. <laughs> it was it was somehow my first one that was that was good. It was the first one ever, fresh out the mold, fresh out the mold it. had no voids on the surface, and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> <laughs> I made this, uh, and yeah, I just I just kept. I kept with it ever since and so here we are two years later and i'm making some of the best dice i've i've ever seen even for handmade dice um around and i'm exploring into woodworking and 3d printing and everything so it's yeah a journey it has been wow so 
you, you talked about getting a sprue mold from Etsy as a gift from your wife. Have you tried other pre-made molds? Yeah, we, um, from that little sprue mold, we went to a pre-made slab mold, um, from the same supplier. Um, and then we got tired of paying that price for a pre-made mold and decided to try to start making our own. Um, and so, yeah. And now we've got our own set of custom dice and I'm very good at molding. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how, how long does it take you to make uh, a set of dice? Um, it can, it can take me anywhere from, I would say an average of anywhere from four to seven hours of, of labor time. So that's me physically using my hands to pour it, sand it, whatever. Um, takes a few days for the resin to fully cure out of the pressure pot. Um, and I like to, I like to let the ink and the polishing compound set for a, a day in between that. So four to seven hours of labor, um, they'll be ready to like ship out, uh, usually within a couple of weeks after I pull them out of the, the pressure pot. Interesting. So it's very, it's very labor intensive to make them at this quality. And how many can you usually make at a time? Well, we'll pour, I think about six molds at a time usually. And that's, that's spread between like a full set mold, um, some D6 pools, which I've been exploring lately, um, and some chunks. Um, so about six sets. Yeah, roughly six items. Um, really just depends on like how many, good molds I have and how many I can fit in the pressure pots. Okay. So just for anyone that isn't aware of the dice make, making process, take us through step by step that like you have, you, you get an order and you're like, all right, I need to make a full set of polyhedral dice. What is, what is step one to <laughs> packing and shipping? Okay. Well, to kind of just go over a bit of a global view. Um, so I don't get too deep into specifics. Um, it, it starts with sitting down with uh, a two-part epoxy resin. Um, we, we prefer uh, Crit Cast, which is made specifically for dice making. Um, Didn't know they made specifically for dice resin. <laughs> yeah, it, they, they started that, I think, last year. And it's, it's very popular in the dice community. Is it uh, really expensive? I might try it if it's not too expensive. Um, well, it, it's about... It's about a hundred, hundred and twenty dollars in order, mm. and you get uh, a little less than a gallon. I forget the exact fluid amount, but that's yeah. a lot of dice. A gallon of resin. Yeah, yeah, it does go pretty far. Fortunately, it's it's okay. genuinely like it 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 can suck to try to have that hundred or so dollars to order it. Um, but when you sit there and calculate it per milliliter, it's just as inexpensive as like a box of alumilite from michael's so yeah it works far better um yeah uh, <laughs> um, got my two-part resin um my colorants of choice whether that's mica powder um pigment paste uh foil flakes whatever um yeah combine those into a resin in cups i put those into a uh, vacuum chamber to suck air out of it um Go back to the molds, add those colors in as I want to, uh, put them in the pressure pot. Okay. So what? why do you not want the air? Why do you want to suck out the air? And then what does the pressure pot do? Sure. I appreciate you stopping through this with questions because otherwise it would be a very long spiel. So I, I think... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So the vacuum chamber and the pressure pot <clears throat> are both intended to uh, reduce air in the ducts. Um, the first one pulls the air up and out. Uh, the second one condenses it down to a uh, microscopic level. That's important because if you, if you, you know, you, if you care about how good your dice look, or if you care about, you know, balance to some degree, you, you don't want a pocket of no mass in the middle of mm. your resin and colorants and yada yada. So yeah, air is really important to get out because it just makes the finish the quality, it makes everything feel worse. Okay. So you've put it in the pressure pot. 
it stays there for what you were saying earlier was hours, days, uh, and then you then oh, you pull sorry. it out and you've got these molds full of hard resin. Yes. Yeah. It, they go in the pressure pot overnight and in the morning, um, pull them out of the molds, which is kind of, that's always the most exciting part. Kind of feels like Christmas opening presents. <laughs> um, and then I let it sit for about three days until the resin like fully hardens. Um, so they can handle the sanding process, sanding and polishing process. Do you cut sprues before it fully hardens or do you use molds that don't have sprues? Anymore. molds that don't have sprues we really like slab molds as they're called which is what it sounds like it's just a big slab of silicone with your you know your pockets of whatever your object is throughout the slab so we like those because we can be extremely intentional about where specifically we're dropping a specific color into that mold um what level it's at do we want to drop it in from the cup do we want to hang it over yeah mm -hmm. okay so the sanding and the polishing process is uh the part of the process that sounds just the worst <laughs> it is oh my god <laughs> it is the worst it is the longest um because it as good as sorry kind of broke myself a little there uh, <laughs> um, as well as I've like sanded and polished our masters, I'm always getting better, of course. So every time I go to sand dice from every iteration of molds, I'm like, oh, I could have done that face better. And I end up usually end up sanding every single face of the dice that I pull out of a mold, even though I've molded very well polished masters. I just keep finding spots to improve. Mm -hmm. Sure. And are you just using sandpaper for that? Or I assume there's some special, like, super micro <clears throat> fine grit sandpaper that gets you up to that, like, glass-like finish, right? So there is special sandpaper. Um, it's called Zona paper, made, and it's made by 3M. Um, it's not, like, a particularly unusual grit or anything. It's the, uh, the carbide that's in the paper um is a is a softer material than your standard sandpaper uh so it it's just a little more gentle on the resin it it's a lot less aggressive and it yeah it lets me spend more time and not over sand and take numbers out uh much more easily so it is special sandpaper and it yeah right. color coded and everything I've, I have also been a big fan. You mentioned him earlier, Ribinator, the guy that got you into it. And mm -hmm. he got like this pottery wheel set up to make the sanding process easier. Do you do anything fancy or do you just like, I got my paper, I got my dice and I'm just, I'm just going at it. I, I do have a fancy thing. It's not a pottery wheel. I've tried the pottery wheel. Didn't like it. Hang on. Oh, oh, he's on the move. On the move. Live. Show and tell. Yeah. We didn't bring anything. Oh, um, what? What? We, get? we didn't. We didn't bring anything to show off. <laughs> I mean, we you have a wall. Of books, you're good. Um, so I've tried. I've tried the pottery wheel. I've tried um, the barbatory tumbler. That's what it's called. Oh, um, yeah, it's okay. now popular, and I just I don't like the finish I get. Mm -hmm. So I bought a very special piece of glass. <laughs> okay. It's it's called float glass, um, and it's supposed to be like within a five thousandth of an inch across this whole surface, so stupid flat. Um, so I have that, and I just hand sand for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. All right. For anyone wondering, that is where the cost of these dice come. <laughs> Absolutely, the time is, and not not just the time it takes to finish each set, but you know, after doing this for two years, I have lots of skill and knowledge and expertise that just, you know, you guys know. Oh, so yeah. absolutely. absolutely, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. yeah. Ask for always, always get paid what you're worth. Yes. Yeah. All right. And then the final step after the polishing, inking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The second worst part of it, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So it's for a couple of reasons, um, but I just, it's just so small, you know, I just, <laughs> it's just such a small area to work in. It's so tedious. 
So do you Literally. really try and paint like paint in the lines on the indents on the dice? Oh yeah, or... every single one. Really? You won't you won't just like overpaint the whole thing and wipe it clean? No, I hate that method. It's really? it's messier. I I muck up the finish cuz again, I you know, quality is a part of this and I don't want to I don't want to ruin work I've already done, so I'm just going to yep, I'm just going to sit there with a the paintbrush and wow. slowly just yeah. That is impressive. That is impressive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was very meticulous for sure. You also put your logo on the twenty face of yep. the D twenties, and while a not super intricate logo, I'm getting out the set that you sent us. Sweet. While not a super intricate logo, you've got you've got like the little tiny like F like the backwards F yeah, and the F hooks in and the stuff. stuff. Oh my gosh, that must be a massive pain in the ass. Actually, the shield's not so bad because I can just... I just kind of squiggle around in there for a while, to be honest. (laughs) (laughs) It's really like the ones and the the nines, any number that has like a really Hmm. long, narrow hook. Oh, yeah, because of the font on them. Yeah, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. (laughs) Wow. So... Wow, that I'm very surprised. <laughs> I would I would 100 percent just be like, ah, eh, put some paint in it and I'll clean it off. It's already polished. It's fine. I've I've tried that because it it is yeah it's very tedious and and I've I've looked for ways to kind of expedite or, or yeah expedite the process and sure. if it if it doesn't look as good as what I can just do by hand I I don't stick with that. Interesting. So. When you're sitting down, you're like, okay, today is dice making day. What uh, what kind of steps do you go through to choose what dice you're gonna, what you want to make the dice look like? For example, uh, you sent us, I believe, a dark green with gold flex, and I believe I have a, a light blue with gold flex. What is, what's your what's your inspiration process when it comes to the design and the look of the die? Ah. Uh-huh. what's been ordered <laughs> not really a huge process to that part to be honest um i just i mean i see a lot of inspiration in just everyday life looking at you know maybe the the a particular color palette of how maybe water looks um or a line of trees um or really beautiful video game art i mean truly i'm just i just look for colors that i really like and I look for colors that I really like that color with. And then I just, from there, I think about what textures I want, um, what kind of complementing uh, foil flakes I might want to use. And yeah, I go from there. So that's that's a, really the easiest part for me is, is uh, picking what to pour. Okay. So you just do it by feel. <laughs> True. We don't have yeah, color wheel. Feel. We're not trying to match across the thing. And... No, I mean, I I have intentionally chosen to try to uh, explore new specific techniques or something like that. Um, and when I've done that, I'll, I'll go a little more on the simpler side so I can focus on exploring the technique. But yeah, for the most part, I just sit down and roll with it. Well, a very well-oiled machine at this point. I can't imagine you were always... A very well oiled machine. You see what I did there was a, called a segue. Hey. In the biz. In the biz. You biz. can't have always been a, a very well oiled machine. Well, or maybe you can because your very first dice turned out fucking perfect right out of the mold. <laughs> but what hey, were some please. of those? What, what were some of those early struggles in pitfalls when you know before? If, if I wanted to get into dice making. And I don't want to invest in a pressure pot. I don't want to get a vacuum chamber. I, I'm not, I'll, I'll get like some fine sandpaper and like a little bit of polishing, but not, I, I'm not going full investment on like the giant slab of glass mm-hmm. that's like perfectly flat by like some scientist. <laughs> <laughs> what are what are the biggest pitfalls that I'm going to face that in your experience and how do you work around them with a more limited scale? of uh, materials and techniques available to you mm. or do you just recommend that i fuck uh well i always recommend that okay. um, i mean because i i mean truly like that's 
that's how I've mostly learned through learned how to do a lot of this is a little bit of research beforehand, but mostly bug around and finding out. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so, but if you're if you're someone who is just looking to get basic stuff and just get started like that, um, don't expect any of it to come out good. Okay, it's not going. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it, it i mean truly to make even the even dice that look as nice as the ones y'all got which i promise you are blemished um it's a quick yeah. sidebar here this man approached us on tiktok saying hey mm-hmm. i like what you're doing i've got these dice that have some flaws in them some problems and i would love to send them to you and we were like absolutely let's do that <laughs> And we still haven't found the problem. No, we still haven't found they it. Look, they look perfectly <laughs> human. <laughs> We've been using that. Like my <laughs> set is in my little, I've got a little rolling mat because I bring it to work with my work game for my ranger. I have, I have been playing this for a while now and I have not once found a problem with any of them. <laughs> well, we can talk about that a little later. <laughs> okay. Answer the question. Um, (laughs) to to take it out of the sidebar back to uh yeah so don't expect any of your dice to be good um people have found ways to improve what you can get out of uh basically a no no equipment setup like that as i would state it um and that's things like warming up your resin choosing a resin that's thin enough to release bubbles well on its own. Um, but at the end of the day, you don't have equipment that is important for quality control, essentially. And so that's going to look like crap. And if you're fine with that, if, if you're okay with, if you're okay with that, just to explore and see if it's something you might want to really invest in as a hobby, go for it. Don't let, don't let the quality of the dice that you're going to produce really slow you down because it's it's about the journey, not the destination. And after two years of lots and lots of failed dice, mason jars of failed dice, <laughs> it's it's all about those failures because that's what you're gonna that's where you're gonna learn the most every time. I am wholly convinced you could sell mason jar like get get the smaller ones like stretch the inventory a little bit but small (laughs) mason jars of just the most fucked up pores that have turned out just awful or like with massive voids like don't even cut the sprues off just like as a as a a display piece yeah really i think that also we should title the episode it's not the journey it's the dice donation dice donation shit why didn't i think of that (laughs) <laughs> you did most of the work i just got you a little last uh the last right, five right, right, there. Right. so so all right maybe we can talk about like a 10 percent royal revenue share revenue, revenue share absolutely revenue profit share, share. Yeah. um so Ooh. i'll segue now segue um so as somebody you know who might want to get in at the beginning ready to make all the mistakes in the world what what would be my beginner's kit? Like, what do I need to start? What kind of budget are you talking? Well, you're still probably going to spend between 50 and a hundred dollars. Um, you need, you, you need a good thin two part resin. Um, and that's going to cost a little bit more, uh, just cause that, Thin resins cost a little more for reasons, basically. Do you have um, a specific brand? Yeah, uh, Amazing Clear Cast mm. is what I tend to hear people have the most success with, especially if they don't have, well, definitely when they don't have like a pressure pot or vacuum chamber. Um, so I would recommend that one. Um, I would definitely recommend a a slab mold over sprue molds um, for reasons, basically. Um, And you're going to need to pick out some resin dyes, not alcohol inks, um, or some mica powders, and you're going to need some nitrile gloves. Oh, the PPE, the Mm -hmm. safety. Yes. Last line of defense. Yep. Um, So with, with molds, are you... 
you have to, I have to imagine that there's a lot of really bad mold, silicone molds you can buy for dice. Do you, do you just go with it? Hope you find a good one. Is there anyone, I mean, obviously your wife apparently got you like a God mold for the first <laughs> dice. but <laughs> you only had one good one, man. And it's a good thing. It was that first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, do you for do you, like your research there. Cause there's, uh, I haven't looked in a while having made my own, but I mean, there's, I've, I've seen no shortage of people talking about selling, pre-made molds on Etsy. So do some research. Uh, if, if someone is consistently selling out really crappy looking molds, like the, if they, yeah, if they're doing that, their reviews are going to reflect it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are dice like making communities that you can join where you can maybe like ask these questions as well and get multiple opinions for sure. So there's no shortage of, community support so definitely do that if you're thinking about it communities like reddit or where where do you, yeah, where do you like reddit, to... facebook um any of the socials so the dungeon bros discord um <laughs> that's not true nobody talks about dice making there but uh what kind of specific properties in a silicone mold are you looking for if you were shopping for hmm. a mold on etsy um look for a platinum cure mold mm -hmm. granted that may not be like specified um by the maker and you might have to ask <clears throat> but look for a platinum cure okay what kind of form factor do you want like a really thick mold that will like hold its shape and last for a lot of castings or just something that's a little bit thin and easier to work with or i, I, I would look for something beefy okay. um because it if if you find you like it and you find you might invest in a pressure pot you're gonna want like it has a good amount of mass to it some good spacing between the numbers um and look for to get a little more technical look for something that is made with um either dragon skin 20 which we've had a lot of success with or something that is as well <laughs> what's that thematically <laughs> appropriate as well <laughs> i know i i don't know where smooth on got that name but yeah, they went they went hard with that Power one. Power tool. <laughs> um, so yeah, something like Dragon Skin Twenty or some other um, a twenty shore hardness silicone to be a little more technical. Okay, nice. Um, so there, there's your entry budget of like a like fifty to a hundred dollars, as you say. Yeah. What are the ma What's the major upgrade path to really up your dice making game? Well, it it's going to get a lot more expensive really quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to be the best at something when you want to have a really good product that comes with the territory. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, to be honest, in the grand scheme of like getting into making something yourself, it's not expensive as other hobbies. You're you're going to spend probably around a thousand dollars. Ooh, I mean, uh, okay. I mean, right. It's right. easy to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, but you're going to need um, a vacuum chamber. That's going to cost you about 100, 150. Um, the, the pressure pots that we use, I think they're about $300 now. Um, you need an air compressor. You need however much resin you're going to want to use. Well, air compressor, you, I, would, I would say like 150 Look for a uh, a quiet quote quiet tech one, so mm -hmm. you don't lose your hearing running it in your basement. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, resin, which as we stated earlier, that's going to run you a hundred hundred twenty dollars. Um, I would get a decent amount of silicone. You don't have to go and get a gallon and spend two two hundred fifty on that. Um, you could just get a couple of pints at a time, basically, kind of what we still do. Mm -hmm. um a good range of colorants um so get yourself mica powders resin dyes um different types of foil flakes or glitter whichever is your choice you've mentioned um, this a couple of times what exactly is mica powder do you know i do all right sidebar so <laughs> mica powder sidebar 
Yeah. Mica powder is pigment powder mixed with mica, which mica is a naturally occurring mineral in rocks. It's <clears throat> really pulled out as like a, a byproduct of other manufacturing sources, but mica and pigment powder. And mica is the, the part of the mica powder that has that like glittery shimmery effect. Okay. okay. Um, and then your pigment powder is the stuff that actually gives it the color. So that's mica powder. Okay. Um, yeah. So get a collection of that. Get a collection of all of that. I think the last main thing that we have to address is uh, PPE equipment, which um, you're going to spend like $100 on. You're going to want to get yourself a good amount of gloves, a good amount of so nitrile gloves, a good amount of mixing sticks, um, mixing cups, whether you're going to go with silicone or plastic, uh, a you respirator. In that regard. What's that? Do you have a preference in that regard? I ha I was I was gifted a resin making kit and it came with like silicone cups specifically to mix it in so you could reuse them. Do you like that? Um no. It's more responsible for waste, but I really hate taking the time to get all of that resin out. I'd rather just do the math best. with some plastic cups with the numbers on there and, and go mm -hmm. from that. So yeah. They're really no more expensive than the other, but yeah. Okay. And um, then I would assume some kind of paint. Respirator. Oh, what? Oh, respirator, yeah. Respirator. Oh, yeah. Right, right, yeah, that's right. right we past the part of the process to go through. Uh, <laughs> that's it. Okay, so maybe more than a thousand. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, you still need your respirator. Um, you need a surface to do it at. Uh, yeah. And then, so that's just to, that's just to pour the resin, basically. Um, and then, yeah, you need sandpapers. This float glass is only $20, actually. Much more foldable than you think. Yeah. Um, yeah, sanding papers, lots of paint. Mm. Unless you just have one you like to stick with, like I do, which is that gold. Mm. Um, it is very, yeah. nice gold. It's very nice gold. Yeah, you know, we like, because we, we, we make dice with, I got one here that maybe I can get up to the camera, you know, that has just a lot of variation in that. Mm -hmm. And how, how do you find something that's going to be really consistent and contrast well? Mm -hmm. And that gold seems to do it every time. Um, so yeah, sidebar there, but yeah, no, overall you're going to, yeah, you're, you're going to spend quite a bit, but it's genuinely worth it. No. Uh, you know, we've talked kind of about the resin pouring part of it, but you've mentioned you've been getting into 3D printing, 3D modeling. Um, how do you find that? How do you find that uh, for you? Uh, you know, is it, are you finding a good investment into your business or are you just doing it and having fun? What, what are your thoughts on the 3D printing aspect of your uh, business? Yeah, so it's, it's mainly for fun right now because um, I'm, I'm just exploring so much that I'm trying to make sure I'm not doing too much at once. Um, so right now it's mostly for fun, gotcha. um, but I do fully intend to, you know, incorporate it into what we can offer um, particularly. And this is what I was mentioned that I have to like show a sneak preview of. Ooh. So Ooh. yeah. Wait, should we build um, this up a little more? Should we like do for a little the first little time, for the first time uh, ever. From found familiar dice, we have. Oh, it don't look too special right now, but hang on, hang on. What? It's kind of a dramatic amount. It's a lot, there's a lot of threads. Maybe take a thread or two off. <laughs> oh. Ooh, so like, a, is that like a D twenty? Enclosure to hold dice, and then it's got it, it looks like an ink pot with yeah, quill. Yeah. It might be a little bit easier if I show a, just a fresh print. Yeah, so it's supposed to, it's a D12 shape, and it's D12. supposed to be a ink and quill jar. Nice. So right. I saw that on my mini factory, and I was like, that's pretty fucking dope. <laughs> that is cool. It'll fit in what we do. The ultimate like gangster upgrade to that is in, is getting a lid where you can actually put an ink pot in the lid and then have an actual ink <laughs> pot in it. That would be dope. <laughs> Yo, dog, I heard you like ink pots. 
Hey. Ink pots. Hey. I said that wrong. But. <laughs> so one one other thing that I've heard about with dice making is if you're going to sell the legality of where you're getting your molds from. Um, so obviously in your case, you have your logo as the 20 side, you've picked your font, you've made your own masters and made your own molds for dice making. If you want to sell dice, how can you safely go about getting molds or safely get brands of dice that you can mold <laughs> yourself that are more okay with replicating? Or yeah, that would so, be legally allowed, I guess. Um, so, so, well, real quick, we actually didn't make our own dice oh. shapes. No, we uh, we went through a master maker, essentially, mm -hmm. um, as most dice makers do. Some some people are able to come up with with their own master designs, um, but no, we just went through a master maker. Um, look through basically what they offered and what we liked and what we felt was going to, what designs and shapes would be right for us. Essentially. Um, the logo was fortunately I'm married to a, a user interface designer. <laughs> um, so she does like all of our branding essentially. Um, um, she did, she designed the logo and everything. Um, so the logo, we were able to come up with something really cool on our own and pass that off. Um, if, you don't know anyone or you, if you don't have those skills yourself, there are people out there in the community that will, uh, will do that for you for money. Um, and these are just so, other dice makers or these specific people. Uh, there's a little bit of both. Hmm? There's a little bit of both little basically. Both. Um, like our, we went through a uh, rebel broker, um, who's now I think exclusively through Patreon, but, um, yeah, they they'll like help you design logos, and then they'll take that stuff and they'll put it on dice and yada yada. So, and do you still use those specific masters, or have you made your own masters since then? Do you still use those? Still use those. Yep. Wow. Yep. Two years later, they're yeah, still in use. Awesome. Wow. So, we've talked about the dice making process. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the getting into the dice making process. But we've had this opinion for a while, and I think it's a little different from the opinion of the community. Um, so when it comes to the spin-down dice, you are familiar with the spin-down dice. I am, yeah. Okay. What is your opinion as the uh, resident expert on dice and dice balance and chaos? <laughs> what is your opinion on rolling a spin-down die for randomness? Is it fair? Is it really? I mean, <clears throat> I mean let's, let, let's put this in a little perspective here. Okay. So you have a hunk of plastic this big, <laughs> right? Yeah. With some shit tossed in it for color <laughs> <laughs> that you're tossing across the surface. Yeah. It's flipping countless times in that, in, in that few short, in those few short seconds. There's not much you can put in there that's really going to make it consistently roll to one side or the other. Um, I mean, bubbles are always a problem for both, you know, the finish quality and, I, I, you know, for, for dice balance, I'd say it's fair to point out, you know, a, a void inside of a die and say, well, that's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, in some inclusions, uh, is is understandable to be leery of. Like if you see a, a die with, heavy metal inclusions mixed in that resin that makes sense but get over it i guess <laughs> they're, they're genuinely not any more un, i would say they're more balanced than some piece of crap jessics basically like they're th those things are injection molded sometimes they uh incorporate differentiations in temperature to get particular effects like everything oh, I'm shit. using is nothing that they wouldn't use. And I'm wearing a respirator for a reason. It's not just the fumes, mica powders, foil flakes, all that stuff is light enough that when you're mixing it in and agitating that stuff, it's, it's as fine as dust. It floats in the air. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's a, it, at that point is a hazard that you can breathe in. So if I'm putting stuff into a dye that 
as, as is as light as dust, how much can that dust like substance really do? Especially when it's more than likely spread out throughout the entire object and not just all clumped in one corner or something. Yeah, and even then, even then, because we it's not uncommon to see uh see dice with that effect where they let the the, the colored resin float down and disperse and and then mm-hmm. mix however it does through the cure process. So even then, like, yeah, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem, I promise you. Oh man, that'll be the hill I die on. You know, when if we if if we ever get big enough and go on some of these like more popular D and D or MTG shows, even where they oh, roll yeah. dice at the beginning, you oh. know, I have I have this spin down dice for uh, it's the first D twenty that I ever had. It's from when I played Magic the Gathering for like six months in college. It was when the Theros block came out. And it's just the, it's just a white with black numbering spin down. And then it has the set logo for the Magic the Gathering set on it for the 20. And I will use this all the time just in regular D&D play. And it seems perfectly fine and fair to me. Yeah. 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 Apparently there's... <laughs> there's contention in the community. You know, it's funny you guys bring that up because we... Um, I've, I've had D and D in person going out at my house again, finally over the last few weeks. And wonderful. I, as part of Christmas, I gave like everyone who consistently plays a set of dice and a few of them live together. Well, a few of the guys that like, I don't regularly play with, they came and they're like, Oh, by the way, your dice got banned by the other person who DMs. I'm like, why? And they're like, well, it, it rolled like a bunch of nat twenties. I was like, oh, that's fun. <laughs> but why is that a problem? Yeah, like, that we began great. this whole whole conversation about why my not dice maker player doesn't know shit about making dice. Oh, <laughs> that's classic. Yeah. It's the same mentality of like, I'm going to put this dice in a jail so I can think about what it's done. Or, or yeah, I need to pick this dice today thing. instead of this dice because this one's rolling better today. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Now, yeah. And you know, it's funny you mentioned that because that's another thing. Like, we sell dice jails. <laughs> They're so, Yeah, yeah. Our chest is that much better when we, you know, yeah. <laughs> now, there is one dice superstition that is 100% true that you need to abide by. When you are resting your dice, when they're on a shelf, when they're in a container, you need to put their highest face facing up so that they can train for what you want them to do. Mm. And so that gravity can pull all of the errant molecules to the bottom so it does have a slight weight advantage. I was going to say, uh, if your dice are roll bad, rolling badly, you should eat them. We don't... Don't eat don't dice. Eat. Don't, oh, right. Wait, I need to say that <laughs> for myself, but... Don't eat them. <laughs> Don't eat dice, especially metal ones. <laughs> speaking, speaking of, do you have any interest in getting into metal dice making, or is that just kind of like ah, uh, you have to cast it, so it's like just a completely different process that you're not really interested in? I mean, I I'm, I'm genuinely open to and interested in any medium of dice making. Um, there was for there was a minute where like I, blacksmithing was a special interest of mine and like I researched the shit out of like DIY blacksmithing, never got into it, um, but I'd be open to that. So, okay. just like I'm 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 open to like trying to make wooden dice or get into lapidary equipment and start making like semi precious gemstone dice. So mm-hmm. there's always new shit rattling around in here that I just I don't have the time or energy or equipment to get to. We have, um, we found it. I found an Instagram account. We've talked about this before, sure. a, a gemstone dice maker that actually is fairly local to us. We, I would love to try and get in contact with them. Cause that I'd run dice works. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I just have a vague awareness of where you guys are all located. Yeah. And he's, the only gemstone dice maker I follow. So, <laughs> okay, gotcha. It's a completely it it's a completely different process of dice making, mm-hmm. and it, it the like your resin dice are absolutely gorgeous, but like actual real gemstone. It, oh, nothing like it. Oh my gosh, really? 
It's beautiful. I'm I'm very flattered that people have said that my dice look like gems, but like my my a friend of mine has a set of amethyst dice mm-hmm. um, from Wormwood before we learned about Wormwood recently, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the amethyst dice are just oh, I still I still like covered them even though I make dice. And you make very, make very, very good dice. Thank you, Jason. This has been spectacularly enjoyable. I think I agree. It's been lovely. Uh, I've been having fun. Of course. Now, if anyone is interested in getting any dice or want to pester you about their problems in dice making, where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, uh, and I have link in all of my bios to my link tree, which has links to like my Patreon and a, a YouTube I'm not really using and my other socials. So yeah. And you have a website if they want to order as well. I do have a, I do have a website. Yep. That is also linked in the link tree. Thank you. Okay. Um, and yeah, if no, you clear dice. go there or just reach out to me directly. Mm-hmm. Yep. No. Found familiar dice on pretty much any social media platform. Mm-hmm. Hit him up. Tell him that we sent you uh, so that we can pressure him into sending us uh, more flawed <laughs> dice. <laughs> I, I got some around. So. <laughs> send us a mason jar of just of the just, most... Uh, uh, the next time you send us anything, if you send us anything... You don't have to. You don't have to. But if you send us anything, send us like the most obviously fucked up stuff that you can possibly find like things where it's like right. there's a void yeah. that's like an entire corner of it like just the most horrendous things <laughs> and we'll put it on a shelf that sounds fun <laughs> well jason thank you very much for hanging out with us today uh we will we'd love to have you back on we'd love to find you at some some event mm-hmm. and meet you in person i'm, I'm out. looking out i'm 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 doing my first comic con this year that's nice. local to me but i'm really i'm really thinking about how i can put whatever whatever revenue i make off of that towards mm-hmm. getting to other ones next year so okay, if and you guys aren't that far like we're not, you're far not too far from galaxy con i believe mm-hmm. or was it gen gen con. con okay gen con we're going to gen con in august we'd love to we'd love to see you there if you can make it it's in indianapolis so not too far probably won't this year but i'm i'm definitely trying next year of course well thank you very much and in the meantime peace Peace out. Peace.